filming video. Are you ready, Dad? I'm ready. Mo, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready, Mel Mel? Yeah. Let's do it, okay? Okay. okay. I have to sit the grandma somewhere. Okay. <laughs> okay. Life. Uh, we're in the garage today with the uh, with the GLI. Today is something that we're uh, we're gonna put uh, lowering springs on it. Um, the lowering springs uh, that I picked uh, were the H and R uh, the H and R lowering springs. Um, I was gonna go with the APR adjustable coil springs, um, but I kind of thought when I measured the car it was gonna be a little bit too low, especially when I have old kids in the car and everything. I don't want to bang the oil pan on the ground, especially because it's a plastic oil pan on a 2019, um, and I don't want to crack it. Uh, the oil pan will be upgraded uh, to the uh, to the aluminum uh, oil pan. Um, they sell that Black Force on um, Black Force Industries on their uh, their website. Um, more and more parts are becoming available for the uh, for the GLI. Um, so I mean, essentially, it's a, a GTI. So um, I've got a front uh, front downpipe, catless downpipe coming. Um, should be here on Monday. Um, I didn't go with an APR or or uh, or CTS. I went with uh, with the underdog uh, Megan, um, so we're going to test out, uh, see how it is. Um, obviously, if that downpipe doesn't uh, doesn't do what I want it to do, or doesn't you know the welds don't hold up, or what have you, then we're going to change it out for for a higher priced one. Uh, but for now, we're going to see if we can do a budget build with the GLI and make it comparable to buying APR parts and and CTS parts and and, and such. Um, you know, with the cheapest H and R springs that I could uh, I could get, one and a half uh, one and a half inch drop for the Mark Seven and seven and a half GTI. It's the same suspension front end, uh, setup on the front end of the Jetta and the rear end as the GTI, so the spring should fit. So in the box we got our instruction manuals, so all the technical information, a couple stickers, the warranty information, all that. Uh, all that fun stuff, uh, advertisements for, you know, wheel spacers and such. So stuff that we don't really, really need. Um, then we have the two front springs. That thing comes pretty, packaged pretty, pretty good. And then the two rear springs. So that's the springs, and then it'll tell you. Should have it, it's the same as the, the, the GTI, should have it designated as to what side, what side the springs are, and where to, what side they go on. Um, and then it comes with, and I drop one, I drop one, but it comes with a new set of bump stops, because uh, this car has the DSG, or the, uh, what do you call it, the DCC, so uh, it has the electronic shocks, so it needs different bump stops because the stock ones don't uh, I guess aren't, aren't gonna work or, or whatever but um, I don't know maybe I'll leave the stock ones on we'll see what happens so uh, let's get started uh, installing these all right so we as you can see we've taken a tire off the uh, off the car already Mel that's dirty don't touch that please you don't have gloves on um, I don't know if anybody's ever taken their tires off of their uh, their mark 7 Jetta yet but uh, this is, the setup is the same um, as the uh, the GTI front front uh, rotors and calipers and brakes are uh, the red. Yeah, I like the red. You like the red? Okay. I like the red. These are these are off of a Golf R. Um, as you can see, I have the, the dynamic chassis control or DCC. Um, so all these connections got to be got to be taken off to get this out. Um, I'm actually following a video that I watched. Um, by a mechanic in his garage uh, said he's done quite a few of these and um, uh, what do you call it and most people go for the uh, hopefully you guys can see inside there the taking the drive axle out but um what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take the the uh, what do you call it the nut off the end of the uh, the axle and we're gonna pull this whole assembly out of the car without removing the axle from the transmission. Um, that's something I'd rather not have to do if I don't have to. 
this should make the job a lot easier and we won't have to disassemble any of this stuff here. We'll just be able to take this whole assembly, drop it out of the car, change the springs, and put them back in. Oh, what do you want to film? No. The wheel. We're, the wheel? We're showing people the GLI. Yeah, the GLI, why, why? Right. We gotta, do, we gotta take this off. Yeah, and we, we don't have to take this off, right? We have to take this off. Why? But we're gonna put it back on. We're gonna put it back on after. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take it off. So we're gonna take this off. Oh, we went off. Okay. <laughs> Don't hit, yeah, don't hit the car. Okay, go get your gloves right, so out of your room. We're, the things that, from the video now, this is my first time doing it. Um, and apparently I have automatic ride, ride con, or automatic height control, which I didn't realize until now. I've actually, this is my first time underneath here as well. Um, so we're both in this together here. I've never taken apart the front end of my car before. Um, so anyways, there's just some things that, uh, that I'm learning about this too. Um, but pretty much it's the same thing as a GTI. So this has got to come off uh, from underneath here. So the uh, the outer tie rod end has got to come off. Um, the control arm has got to come off. Um, this bolt too was also uh, explained that this has got to come, this is definitely got to come off otherwise you break the uh, automatic uh, level height control. Um, and all this has got to be disconnected and removed um, and then obviously remove this the three top bolts which are, which are 13 millimeters and the assembly should should come right out so and obviously the uh, the, the brake rotor back here the whole caliper assembly has got to be taken off um, and I'm just looking for a spot where maybe I might be able to hang the brake rotor but I'm not sure that's working out so well um, all right, so let's uh, let's let's try and get started and uh, and do this, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Snap clip. I want the brake line to the body of the car. This you have to be careful with. This this pops off and, and goes flying. Um, and they're extremely uh, extremely tense on there. So uh, they'll they'll go flying. If you lose them, it's uh, probably not a good idea. So, if people don't already know this, the easy way, pull this up and it releases a little tab on the inside there and then this sensor will come right out. Don't, don't be an idiot like me and pull the ABS sensor out. Not that it's going to affect anything or hurt anything, but it's really tight back here. So doing it the way that I did it was the easiest thing that I could come up with. Um, and it was actually brought to my attention by my my buddy Dan, who is the reason why I am so hardcore into Volkswagens. And this goes back to our high school days. Um, and actually, he'll be with me in uh, at H2O in New Jersey in a couple weeks. Um, so that's the big show that we're excited for. All right. So now we've got all this all this loose and disconnected. Now what we're going to do 
is we're going to release the nut here. Then we're going to release, loosen the bolts there. Actually, no. The next step is what we're going to do is we're going to take this this axle nut off. Uh, yeah. All right, stop. stabilizer link. Um, next step that we're going to do is make sure all these lines are, are loose so we don't break anything. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to stick a screwdriver in here and then we're going to release the axle nut. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to take the three bolts underneath off and we're going to take the bolt for the control arm and the uh, the tie rod end. The biggest thickest screwdriver I can find towards me. You got a turn wheel. Okay. This is probably going to require some help from. Thank right you. That good? Yeah, it's good. Release it slowly. Suggesting Craftsman, all, all that fun crap. I, I just got whatever Lowe's had. Um, you know, these are hard to come by uh, where I live in Florida. So, um, and then Harbor Freight for 20 bucks, big ass breaker bar because you're going to need it. Um, I don't know if there's an air gun. Somebody that's more professional might have a, an air gun that might be able to zip this thing off, but I don't. I just got a little, a little gun for right now. So, and always make sure you put the screwdriver in the rotor to hold tension and just pry up on it. Obviously you follow righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's loose. Spot I'm working with. So bear help? with me here. Do I need to hold the wheel or are you good? No, you're, you're good. Okay. I believe somebody said these were 13s, but they're not 13s. Um, let's try 15 millimeters. Oh, the, the nut. The nut for just to go over everything. This is 24 millimeter triple square. This is an 18 millimeter. Um, you can use deep socket or like I did or shallow socket, whichever whichever the case. Um, so you got 24 millimeter triple square for the for the, uh, the axle, uh, axle nut. Um, 18 millimeter for this. The underneath for the, for the control arm bolts, 
I'll be damned if I know what they are. I tried the 18 and it was too big. 17 is too big. And I'm sure I don't have a 16 and it probably is a 16. And I almost, almost forgot. And I'll link the, the guy's name who did this on his Golf R and went in depth and detail to show the easier way to, to, to do this without taking the axle out and all. And I know this it seems like it's taking a long time, but it's also because it's my first wheel, first time doing a Mark 7. Um, I'm used to Mark 3s and having help from my friends. Um, right now I just have help from, help from my wife and um, I'm doing it myself. Um, first time with Air Tools though, um, and first time on the MQB platform. Um, I'm a Mark 3 guy. Um, uh, that's I've, I've always been that way. Uh, we still have an ABA engine cabrio. I know the ins and outs of that, no problems. But Mar the, the Mark 7 GLIs and the, uh, and the MQB platform, I'm still new to this, so you guys are gonna have to bear with me here. But I haven't seen any videos of anybody else doing this, so I'll be the, the mule, the test mule for all those other GLI owners out there. Um, all right, so the other guy that did this on his Golf R also has this. Now, I'm not sure that all GLIs are going to have the same same setup as I have with the automatic height control or height whatever the you know the, the height uh, for dynamic chassis control or whatever they whatever Volkswagen is calling it nowadays but you do have to remove this nut um, otherwise and I almost pulled down on it and broke it um, you will break it so there's another bolt if you look underneath right there I'm not sure if you can see it right here that's 10 millimeters that has to come off before you do something stupid like me and yank the shit out of the out of the control arm thinking it's gonna come off I'm just hoping I didn't already break it we'll find out when I turn the car back on and see how many faults I got I did buy OBD 11 it's here I've tested a couple things out. Um, I can confirm that it works with the 2019 or Mark 7 GLI um, and Jettas. Um, I've also, obviously, it, it works on the Mark 6 as I just fixed a coil on my wife's friend's Mark 6, and uh, and I was able to, to clear the codes out of that. Um, not so many things are available for that, especially it was just a base model Jetta. It wasn't anything hopped up or anything. So. Um, Alright, so now that's out. Now, the control room. There we go. Now the control room's nice and loose. Now that I got it loose. There we go. So, that's all disconnected. The next thing to dis disconnect is this nut underneath here. And I believe this is an 18 millimeter. And I'll be damned, it's not. <laughs> all right, don't listen to me. Let's go. Let's figure out the size here. Because this guy was talking like it was a, an 18 millimeter, I believe. All right, I'm using a 21 millimeter. Obviously, Harbor Freight to remove it. If you have air tools, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, if you don't, you might have to use what um, you know, like a spark plug socket or an oxygen sensor socket, um, because there's a little uh, star, you know, a little torx tip or um, a hex tip that you have to hold the middle with and and release the bolt. Um, this car only having seven, I've put 7,000 miles on it, but being in Florida, not having any rust or salt or anything, and only being driven 7,000 miles before I'm tearing into this thing, um, the bolts are still kind of loose, they're not rusted on, everything's easy to get to come off. So if you have a GLI that's been around for for quite a bit longer, or a GTI for that matter, it's been around quite a bit longer, or has got more miles on it, and is up from up north, and has already been through a winter, it's probably not going to be as easy. You might still have to do the method of putting the hex key in here and holding the middle of the um, of the tie rod end link, um, 
and the out and screw the outer bolt at the same time. So I'm hoping that I don't have to do that. I don't think I have to do that. So let's see if we can get it off. We didn't have to do it. It's off. Now, people were beating on it. To get it off, people were beating on it with a hammer over here. I don't really like that idea. Um, what I'm thinking that I might do is screw this on just a little bit and whack this with a hammer to get this up. So you put the bolt on backwards and then whack it with a hammer and try and get it up or a mallet. go popped loose that was the easiest fucking tie right in I mean the easiest tie right in link I've ever taken off not sure if we can say the word fuck on YouTube but I just did so you can you just have to for, for all the for all the, the, the kids that uh, their parents watch over them while they're watching YouTube I apologize however if you are a kid and have a GTI or a GIA uh, Jetta GLI, consider yourself extremely lucky because I wouldn't have had anything close to this when I was a kid. Alright, so now, now that this is loose, we should be able to just unscrew this the rest of the way by hand. I mean, everything is coming off pretty tight, or pretty tight, pretty loose. Wow, I think I need to drink a beer. And there we go. That's the axle nut. Alright, the caliper bolts are the same size, 22 millimeters. Or 21 millimeters, I'm sorry. So to recap, we have 18, 10, 16, and 21 for the caliper bolts. 24 triple square for the uh, axle nut and then we're going to need a I believe it was a 13 millimeter Torx bit um, which I happen to have to get the, the nut off this nut could be troublesome again for you guys up north um, that have already driven through a winter or perhaps maybe you've had their car a couple more miles than I have um, this might be a little bit more difficult to come off um, well I'm hoping it being a Florida car and having little to no rust at all and barely having any miles that it's going to come off fairly easily. All right, and we're going to have to do that one by hand because I can't fit my air tool back there. So those are going to come off by hand. What if I turn the wheel the other way or I can't? No, it's still going to be a pain in the ass. All right. Hang on. I got this. There's the 
bolts obviously for the, the caliper. And actually well All right, well, the battery is dying on, on this, so I'm going to finish taking this off and we'll come back um, when I have the brake caliper off before my battery dies. We're going to have to get another battery or get a plug and plug you guys in. Um, so again, we're going to take this off and then this should be free. So we're not going to play with this. We're not going to play with anything here. We're going to release the three bolts up on the top that are 13 millimeters and take the knuckle and you know obviously the brake row is going to come off but we're going to take the entire knuckle and strut assembly off the car um all is one piece um in my opinion in doing it this way it seems to be a lot better um what this guy suggested and a lot easier um So what do we got going on? All right, I've loosened the three bolts in the top. I've gotten the brake rotor off. I'm resting it on a bucket so we're not putting pressure on the lines. It's just sitting here. Nicely nice. Um, the three 13 millimeter bolts on the top, we've already, I've already loosened. I have not taken them off yet because when I do, I'm gonna, this is gonna drop. Um, and this is heavy, so this is gonna have to uh, be a two person, uh, two person job. However, I'm trying to find a T13 so that I can take this off. The, uh, the nut for the... Um it's a T what? It's a 12x30. Actually, a torque sturdy. I don't know what the other torque sturdy was, but it was a torque sturdy. Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember what I had torque sturdy on for. Alright, there we go. That big, beefy ass freaking golf R rotor. There we go. So that is all disassembled now. And actually, to record so I'm gonna use a jack to push this up because as I'm taking the bolts up the strut is falling out of the car and I don't want it to bang on the ground obviously these struts are very expensive so I'm gonna use a little help from the jack because I'm not the beefiest guy out there
free and loose. As soon as I start relieving the pressure, just make sure everything is disconnected. Start letting this down a little bit. Note to self, do not release all the bolts on the top strut just yet. You want it to hang a little bit. Because you want to be able to pop that out. against it like that but that's the easiest way but I can think of to get it out all right now we're just hanging by one one bolt you can hold on I can undo the bolt the bolt the bolt is tight It is loose. And then we'll slowly drop it out of the car. Now we should be able to lift it and take the whole assembly out. Alright, so there we go. We got the whole assembly out of the car. So I think that's a lot easier than getting a spreader tool and taking this off and all that. Again, it's my first time doing it and I'm already on board with this. Doing it this way is the easiest way to do it. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this top nut. Um, again, mine is brand new, um, so hopefully this nut comes off easy. Um, if you're not, if you don't have air tools, you might have to again put the, the Allen key in there to hold it with the side, you know, spark plug socket and or the, uh, uh, you know, a, a tool for uh, an oxygen sensor. Um, and I believe that this is also a 21 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken, and it is. So we're going to use air to get this off as well. Um, and again. When this comes up, comes about, now this is the same setup as the GTI and the Golf R. Um, so the spring should not be under that much tension right now. So we should be okay to not have to use spring compressors. I'm going to release it slowly and see what happens. Um, you also want to be careful. There's bearings in your uh, strut mount on the upper strut mount. Um, so you don't want to separate this this little plastic piece here from the from the metal plate because the bearings will, will fall out. Um, that was also another tip from, uh, from that other the other YouTube video that I had watched.
Is it really? Yeah. Alright, so it did pop, but there's not that much tension. So. And his wife is still alive. And my wife is still alive. Unfortunately. <laughs> Alright, so now you want to carefully take this off. Now, I'm not going to separate any of this stuff and show you what the insides look like. Um, so it should be a pretty standard thing. So there goes the stock, the stock Volkswagen spring. Now there are little tabs. This is, this is kind of heavy to be moving around. But so there are tabs to line this up to line the new spring up, and we're going to replace the, the bump stops as well. So if you've gotten this far, congratulations, you have successfully voided your 7 years, 72,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty on your new Volkswagen. Oh, there. You know what I did want to do? I wanted to show you guys the difference in size. So as you can see, they're a little bit shorter, not by much, but they're a little bit shorter and then once the car settles it should be noticeable. So if anybody's looking for stock GLI springs, they're here. Message me. Alright, now we're going to put this back together. And the H&R springs that I got, is, I mean, every everybody who's bought these can tell you, tells you it's the front, obviously. It's so kind of self-explanatory. Taking it off, you should be able to see which is the front and which is the back. The isolators back up, and we're going to stick this little plastic boot back on. Isolator. Maybe I was wrong. That's on. We're going to tighten it back down. So we're back in. So we're back in. The spring is in and up. Um, the one thing I will say is you do have to be a little bit careful with, when you're up top um, in lining it up if it's misaligned you're gonna have a hell of a time getting the, the shock back up and mounting it um like i just did so i've already put the ball joint back down tighten that down i just screwed the the control arm or the, not the control arm the stabilizer link stabilizer link i haven't tightened anything yet i'm still in the process of putting everything back together but putting it together is reverse of of taking it apart um Obviously, if you took it apart and got as far as I got, it should have, uh, it should be self-explanatory now to put the damn thing back together at this point. Um, so, we're just, uh, back to, uh, putting it back together now. So, we'll see, uh, see how the rest of this goes back together and if everything works when we're done.
So the front has been lowered. Um, we're finished with that. It's lower than I expected, um, but it looks good. Um, and I'll show you guys later on the finished results. We got everything put back together. Now we're going to work on the back. So for the back, there's three bolts. The backs are going to be considerably easier. That's what we're taking out right there. So there's a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt back there. All those have to come out. These two are 18s. This one is a 13. Um, you put a, you know, a wrench on one side and an so uh, air, air socket on the uh, you know, air wrench on the other side and wrench it off.
Okay, so we lied. There is something a little different on this side. Right, we have, if you have a GLI with the DCC, you're going to have this auto leveling, auto ride leveler right there. That has to be disconnected. Otherwise it'll snap and you're not gonna have a good night. So, I'm gonna get my torque spits and get it off. But uh, so this is the other side, um, and again, this has to come off. Um, otherwise, this is only cheap plastic; it'll it'll snap right off. So um, I'm gonna take that off and then uh, and then uh, finish this side. Back driver. Oh yeah, and that's uh, this is on the back driver side. We hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.